Hello and welcome to the MyCloud Connect Visual Callflow Editor training. This roadmap presentation is for information purposes only. Roadmap information should not be relied on in making a purchasing decision. There is no legal obligation to deliver any future products, features, or functionality within any specified time frame, if at all. Release dates and content are subject to change at our sole discretion. Upon completion of this training module, you'll be able to successfully navigate through the Visual Callflow Editor, successfully create and edit Callflow components, and successfully describe how the Callflow components are connected. Our agenda for today is as follows. Lesson 1, the Visual Callflow Editor Overview and System Programming Extensions. Lesson 2, extension lists and associated Callflow components, including extension lists, pickup groups, and paging groups. Lesson 3, schedules, which includes our on-hour schedule, off-hour schedule, holiday schedule, and custom schedule. And last is Lesson 4, which includes the advanced call flow component, hunt groups, emergency hunt groups, and auto attendance. Lesson 1 of the Visual Call Flow Editor. The Call Flow Editor provides decision makers and phone managers with access to call flow features and an easy-to-use interface, listing all existing call flow components, as well as displaying a graphical representation of each component of your call flow as you create or edit it. For each call flow component you select, an interactive diagram shows exactly how the customer's phone calls flow through your organization. Note that in order to access the call flow editor, you must first log into your My Account portal with your decision maker or phone manager credentials. In this lesson, you'll observe how to successfully identify the nine call flow components included in the Visual Call Flow Editor, successfully navigate through the Visual Call Flow Editor, successfully describe how call flow components are connected. To access the Call Flow Editor, navigate to Phone System and then Visual Call Flow Editor. Once in the Call Flow Editor, you will first be presented with a list of all existing call flow components, if any. You can search for already configured components by name, assigned system extension, or component type using the search field at the top of each of those columns. Details about existing call flow components are displayed to the right when a component is selected. Notice the controls at the top left of the editor. From here, you can add any component type using the Add drop-down menu. We'll explore this more in a bit. Edit the existing components by checking the box next to the component and clicking Edit. This will open the component within the graphical editor. You can copy existing components so that it can be used and edited through the existing programming and can be repurposed, or you can delete a component from the system. There are nine call flow components in total. Auto attendance, which allow for menu routing options to be provided to the caller in the automated format. Hunt groups, which allow for calls to hunt through a group or list of users to find an available person to take the call. Pickup groups, which allow users at other phones to utilize a generic extension number to pick up any ringing phone within hearing range. Paging groups, which allow paging messages to go through the speaker phones or active audio paths of Mitel IP phones. On hour schedule, which offer normal business days worth of hours that are fully customizable. Holiday schedules, which allow you to define holidays within normal working business days and a custom schedule, which allows for individual days to be defined, as well as a time range in which the routing of calls will be processed differently. Next is extension lists, which are utilized by many of these call flow components. And finally is the emergency hunt group. This will define how calls are going to be routed in the case of an emergency and emergency services needs to offer a return call. Again, the call flow components in the visual call flow editor are only accessible to decision makers and phone managers. Paging groups, pickup groups, hunt groups, and emergency hunt groups, as well as auto attendants, all require system programming extensions to be assigned to the call flow component. These extensions allow for components to be reached in the system either by dialing internally or by being linked from another call flow component, such as configuring an auto attendant to dial a hunt group programming extension when you choose a specific option, like pressing 2. The next available system extension is automatically assigned to these components. They can be edited to any other unused extension, so long as it's valid and doesn't conflict with the dial plan. 
Some components, such as hunt groups and auto attendance, allow for 10-digit programming numbers to be assigned so the component can be reached by an external caller. These are optional, however, and whereas the system extensions are required when displayed in a call flow component. Adding and editing call flow components are performed in the call editor. On the left of the editor panel, where you will configure the component, the display options vary from one component to the next. You can click on the vertical editor panel tab to close the panel and see more of the call flow drawn out and expand it to access configuration options. On the right of the screen is the graphical depiction of the call flow component you're editing. If you collapse the editor panel, the entire screen will be devoted to drawing out the component. Regardless of whether the editor panel is visible or hidden, you can click and drag any blank space to move the diagram around. You can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out quickly and double click anywhere except the component name to zoom in on smaller increments. Left click on the component name to collapse and expand all subsequent functionality. To view changes as you make them, use the refresh button at the top of the editor panel to draw out any new programming in the editor diagram. When you've completed your programming on any call flow component, don't forget to click the finish button on the bottom right to save your changes. Should you wish to discard your changes and return to the component list from any component editor screen, click cancel. We will now take an in-depth look at each component and configure each one to build a call flow. In this lesson, you'll observe how to successfully create a functioning extension list, successfully create a functioning paging list, successfully create a functioning pickup group, and successfully integrate an extension list into other call flow components. An extension list is simply a collection of extensions used to define who can do things like paging or call pickup. They can be used for dial by name in the auto attendant, and they do not require a system programming extension. Click Add on the Visual Call Flow Editor main screen to choose the extension list from the dropdown. Name the extension list something unique. Add and remove users to the extension list using the selected and available sections. To assign someone to the extension list, click the checkbox next to the name and extensions of the user in the available box. To remove, click the X to the right of the name of the extension of the user in the selected box. Note that this will move them to the bottom list, the available list, and not their original position, in case you're trying to find someone you just removed and are not seeing them in the long list of extension. The search field filters both selected and available users, and click Finish to save. Pickup groups are used in group environments, allowing users to answer any ringing phone in a group using soft keys, programming keys, or star commands. Add a pickup group from the dropdown. Name the pickup group something unique. Next, confirm that the automatically assigned system extension is OK for use. If not, edit it to a valid, unused extension. Some components need to be assigned to a specific location. Assign pickup groups to an existing location. Next, assign an existing extension list from the Extension List drop-down menu. This is where we built the main extension list first. We won't be able to complete programming of a pickup group without assigning an existing extension list to it, so it makes sense to create the list first. Once you click Finish and save your changes, users in this list will be able to pick up calls to this group. As an alternative to an in-house paging system, you can use a paging group to broadcast a message over the group of speakerphones or even handsets or headsets, making them paging endpoints. Configuring a paging group is a little more complex than what we saw with the pickup group, but it allows you to avoid having to install speakers in a paging system. To add a paging group, we start in the same place with an Add drop-down menu and selecting Paging Group. Name the paging group something unique and confirm or edit the assigned system extension. You can check the Make Extension Private box only if you wish to remove this component extension from the company directory. Assign the component to an existing location. This is important for association with the appropriate equipment and for the appropriate users. Determine whether you want to include this group in the system dial by name directory, which makes it accessible to outside callers, and enable priority paging if so desired. By default, priority paging is not enabled, and pages are delivered as a call. 
when enabling priority paging if selected. If a user is on a call, when a page is sent, the active call is immediately placed on hold and the page is delivered by whatever method is selected. Choose between pages being delivered by speakerphone or by active audio path, which is whatever audio path is in use at the time that this page is sent. Assign the extension list that will be paged when the page is placed to this paging group, just like how we assigned an extension list to our pickup group. You can adjust membership by selecting the boxed arrow. No answer number of rings sets the total number of rings before the page terminates when ringing the phone of each member of the assigned extension list. This allows you to determine the number of rings to prevent pages from being forwarded to voicemail. Most availability state defaults that allow ringing allow three rings prior to forwarding the voicemail by default. Group paging synchronization delays specifies in seconds how much of a delay takes place between initiating the page and when the phone broadcasts the page. Finally, click Finish to save. Now, let's move on to Lesson 3, Schedules. In this lesson, you will observe how to successfully create an on-hour schedule, understand how an off-hour schedule is created, successfully create a holiday schedule, and successfully create a custom schedule. Schedules always start with the most detailed schedule and work their way towards the bottom. The custom schedules are at the top of the list with the most specific parameters when this schedule is applied to call control devices. This includes a specific date and time range that this schedule should be applied. Holiday schedules are similar to custom schedules. However, they do not contain the time range, only the date in which they should be applied. On-hour schedules are the most commonly applied schedules. This schedule is used to define the normal business hours for the company. This can be broken into multiple time ranges on a certain day or a continuous block. For the purpose of thought of this, let's say our business hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And with the creation of any or all schedules, anything outside of those schedules are considered off hours. Now, let's review programming these schedules in depth. Again, on our schedules covers the hours that call flow is open, traditionally with live answering being available. If your business hours are open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, this is how you would want to configure these on hour schedules. To begin, select Add and then On Hours from the Add drop-down menu. It is entirely possible that you will need to create multiple on-hour schedules, so be sure you can distinguish between them when assigning them in your call flow. Next, set the time zone for the schedule. This is important as it matches the geographic location when the schedule is being used or your ability to receive calls when you're open will likely be affected. The number of days initially listed and the on-hour schedule defaults to one line per day, Sunday through Saturday. The days drop-down allow you to choose from any day, Sunday through Saturday, and set the start time and end time accordingly. Here we have Saturday and Sunday. However, if you do not have weekend hours, the trash can removes these unneeded lines and days. You can also add more lines to cover more days or even multiple instances on a single day with the Add button. This allows you to split hours or days such as an office-wide lunch hour. Click the All Day button to automatically set the hours for the day from 12 a.m. to 11.59. You can click the Show Warnings to see if there are issues. This displays issues or troubles where the schedule may have overlapped or otherwise had duplications. And you can click Finish to save. Holiday schedules override the on-hour schedule on the date or dates schedule. This allows you to establish a weekly recurring on-hours and off-hours call flow with the on-hours and then define one-off or yearly recurring holiday call flows separately and automatically with your holiday schedule. Add a holiday schedule like normal by selecting Holidays from the Add menu. Again, name the holiday schedule something recognizable and unique. You are less likely to have multiple holiday schedules, but it is still possible. Assign it the correct time zone and click plus add to add a holiday or multiple holidays to the schedule. None are present by default. Name the holiday and then check the box if you want to set this as a yearly recurring holiday. If you do not check the yearly holiday box, this is going to be a one time only for the year that you assign it to. Use the date field to establish the holiday date. Note that the holiday schedule only sets all day holidays. You cannot choose times. However, you can use the custom schedule for a partial day coverage, which we'll cover next. Again, the trash icon deletes the line of the schedule, so if you add too many holiday lines or your company no longer recognizes a holiday, you can easily remove it. 
Here we've programmed a holiday for Memorial Day in the United States. This is a rotational holiday and is on the same day, but not the same date every year. So we programmed it in with the date that includes the year, and we've left the yearly box unchecked. Click Finish to save this schedule. Custom schedules override both holiday and on-hour schedules for date and time scheduled. There are several reasons to use the custom schedule. It can be utilized to take a certain portion of a day off, or it can allow you to define custom hours that may affect only certain days out of the year. For example, on the first of the month, you may not open until later in the day, so this gives you the opportunity to schedule a later open time. Add a custom schedule by selecting Add Custom Schedule from the drop-down. Name it something unique, and as with the other schedules, add a time zone. Like with the holiday schedule, you can create a custom schedule with multiple entries. Again, no entries are listed by default, and you can click the plus add to add a line to the schedule and name the individual custom event. Use the date field to establish this holiday and set the time range in the custom schedule. Unlike holiday schedules, making the custom event reoccur yearly is accomplished differently. Instead of a yearly checkbox to make the custom event reoccur yearly, simply remove the year from the date. If only the day and month are included, the custom event becomes yearly. If the day, month, and year are included, this one becomes a one-time custom event. Custom events include a start and end time. This allows you to create custom events for part of the day and overrides all the other schedules. Then you have the remainder of the day to be dictated by the holiday schedule or the on-hour schedule. Finally, you'll click Finish to save. To recap, we've now created extension lists, pickup groups, paging group, and one of each of the schedules, holiday, on hours, and custom. Now that we've created these, we are ready to assign our final two call flow components, which are far more robust and complex than those that we've completed before. In this lesson, you'll observe how to successfully explain a hunt group's purpose, successfully create a hunt group, successfully explain an emergency hunt group purpose, and successfully create an emergency hunt group successfully explain auto attendant functions, and successfully create an auto attendant, and successfully integrate schedules into other call flow components. Hunt groups allow you to direct calls to designated members through several different distribution methods. Note, not to be confused with extension lists or pickup groups, hunt groups allow you to easily manage members within the call flow component itself, all of whom share access to an incoming call. Hunt groups can be programmed with schedules, individual members, and call forwarding settings. To add a hunt group, you'll select hunt group from the drop-down menu. Name the hunt group something unique, and confirm or edit the automatically assigned system extension so that the call flow component can be reached internally. Again, leave Make Extension Private unchecked if you want this hunt group to be listed in the internal company directory, and for hunt groups you also must list a backup extension. This extension is the one called if the hunt group for some reason is unavailable or unreachable. Assign the hunt group to a location. For simplicity's sakes, assign the hunt group to the location where most of the hunt group members reside. If you wish to make this hunt group reachable by external callers, click the Assign button next to the phone number. Next, simply choose from the list of the unused 10-digit telephone numbers available on your account in the drop-down menu. If a 10-digit telephone number is assigned, this hunt group can be reached by external callers as well as internal. The Dial by Name directory allows the hunt group to be included in your directory. Next, we'll click Edit to manage the hunt group members. This will open a new screen within the hunt group editor panel. You'll use the search box to look through both the selected and available users, and you'll click the checkbox next to their name and extension. This will move them to the selected box from the available box. You'll click the X to the right of their name and extension in the selected box to remove them. Other call controls like auto attendance and other hunt groups can be included in the membership list. There are also additional considerations when including these call controls in the membership list. Unlike extension lists, the order the hunt group members are listed can affect how the calls are distributed when using the top-down distribution. To reorder hunt group members, click the up and down arrows to the left of the X of the list of members in the desired order. Once you have all the hunt group members selected and ordered correctly if needed, click back to return to the hunt group editor main screen. Let's complete our hunt group programming by discussing distribution, contingency plans, and scheduling for hunt groups. You have two options for distribution patterns. Top-down rings the hunt group in the order in which the group member lists, starting from the top, working its way to the bottom. Simultaneous rings every member in the hunt group at the same time, regardless of group order. 
you are able to add other call flow components to this list, such as auto attendance and other hunt groups. Note, however, that if there is any call flow component in the member list, you cannot use simultaneous rank. Traditionally, we see additional call control components at the end of a top-down distribution. This allows it to be the end of the line if no other users could answer. Rings per member are set for the number of times a hunt group can ring each member of the hunt group before moving on to the next. The no answer number of rings sets the total number of rings the hunt group will ring prior to sending any calls to the no answer condition space. When utilizing simultaneous ring, all phones in the group will ring the total number of times presented in the no answer number of rings. When top down distribution is chosen, it is more important to consider the no answer number of rings. If the number of rings per member is set to three and the no answer number of rings is set to four, the first person on the list receives three rings, the second member receives one, and the call forwards to the no answer destination. It is important to consider the number of members when considering how many rings per member before going to another destination. In other words, the no answer number of rings should be higher than the total number of all rings each individual member. The call member when forwarding all calls checkbox can be misleading in its wording. If this box is checked, the hunt group calls override the do not disturb availability for hunt group members ringing their phones, even if they set it to do not disturb. Skip member if already on call, on the other hand, is fairly self-explanatory. This will skip any member who is already active in any type of phone call, both internal and external. The final selection includes call forwarding settings related to what we've set above as well as scheduling and other conditions. Click the pencil icon to expand the section and show all the optional call forwarding conditional programming. Everything included in this section of the hunt group is optional. You do not need to program anything here to save the hunt group programming. If the hunt group's call stack is full, this means all lines available to it and the back end are in use. You can assign a forwarding extension. Hunt groups are given a call stack depth of 16 meaning they can support up to 16 simultaneous calls. The no answer field establishes where to forward hunt group calls if the no answer condition above is met. You can either enter off hours or holiday forwarding extensions, just like you can a full call stack and no answer. Choose the existing on hour schedule from the drop down menu and assign one of those to the hunt group. You'll also be able to do the same with the holiday schedule. For hunt groups, there is no custom schedule option. However, you can differentiate hunt group call routing by on hours and the off hours as well as holiday schedule. And finally, as always, click finish to create the hunt group. In addition to hunt group call flow components, MyCloud Connect call flow editor also includes an emergency hunt group call flow component. While similar to standard hunt groups, emergency hunt groups are only assigned to locations registered with emergency services. Each geographic location on your account that is registered with emergency services requires an emergency hunt group to be assigned to it. This location-based emergency hunt group is used to route return calls from emergency services to a set of MyCloud Connect users at this location. Therefore, it should only consist of users at the assigned location. To add an emergency hunt group, you'll select Add Emergency Hunt Group from the drop-down list. The first thing you'll notice in the user interface for the emergency hunt group is far simpler than the regular hunt group. This is due to the dedicated nature of this call component. Since each emergency hunt group is dedicated to a location registered with emergency services, we first need to choose the location. Note that only active locations already registered with emergency services, but not yet assigned to a hunt group, are listed in the location drop-down list in this call flow component. The emergency hunt group will assign a component name and a phone information based on the location you choose. The name and phone number fields cannot be edited. The system extension automatically assigned is not the next available in your account. Instead, the extension assigned to the location's emergency number is registered with emergency services. However, if this needs to be changed, it can be edited to an unused extension, like other call flow extension fields. Adding group members works the same as with a regular hunt group. Again, keep in mind that the purpose of the emergency hunt group is to allow emergency services to return to the emergency call to someone at the location from which emergency calls originate. Therefore, it is imperative that only users located at this location for this emergency hunt group are assigned as members. Finally, click Show More Operations if you need to make additional access to the configuration option. Note that the purpose of an emergency hunt group is to allow emergency services to easily return emergency calls 
by reaching the Emergency Hunt Group members for follow-up, so the default settings are configured as such. Altering these defaults may make it difficult or prevent emergency services from responding to an on-site Hunt Group member. Important Notes If a location's emergency service is updated to a phone number assigned to the corresponding emergency Hunt Group, is automatically updated as the new emergency phone number registered to the location. If the location's emergency services number is deregistered for any reason, the emergency hand group assigned to the location is automatically closed. In addition, any phone numbers programmed to point to the emergency hand group in the phone number screen are also closed. Auto attendants allow for the answering of calls through an automated operator and the selection of digits from the menu to the routing calls without accessing a human to assist. These automated routing options allow for a great deal of choices in terms of how and where calls will can be routed. So therefore, auto attendants are fairly complicated to program especially when comparing them to something like an extension list. Since they can incorporate a schedule and other call flow components, we're looking at them last, so that you've already become familiar with the other call flow components, and now we have a full staple of components to incorporate in your call flow. You'll click Add and choose Auto Attendant from the dropdown. You'll name the Auto Attendant something unique, and confirm or edit the automatically assigned system extension. Again, Leave the Make extension private unchecked if you want the auto attendant to be listed in the internal company directory. You'll assign the auto attendant to a location, and like we saw in the Hunt group, click Assign to choose from the available phone numbers on your account. Select one to assign the external telephone number to reach this auto attendant. This is a particularly important step for any auto attendant that you want to be reachable by customers, as many companies utilize an auto attendant to greet and handle incoming calls to the main number. We're going to skip to the bottom of the page and look at a few final programming steps before we get to the primary auto attendant program. This is important as it also ensures that the auto attendant recites the system menu prompts such as errors and timeouts in the correct language. The multiple digit timeout setting establishes the amount of time the system waits for an additional digit to be pressed before the timeout is reached. We'll now look at setting the schedules and programming the auto attendant. Much of the programming within the auto attendant is by schedule, which is why we created our schedules in advance. Click Assign to open the on hour schedule details. As a reminder, schedules control call components based on the programming of business hours. We need to use prior to programming schedules to determine the automatic routing of calls based off the choices made by the caller. Assign an on hour schedule in the Schedules drop down menu if you want this auto attendant to be programmed for on hours functionality. A quick note about on hours if you do not assign an on hour schedule, the call flow component is functioning 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This may be fine, especially if you're programming an internal auto attendant whose call flow functionality is independent on the time of day or day of week. Holiday and custom schedules will still override a 24 hour schedule in this situation. Click upload to add a recorded prompt to the schedules prompt. This is necessary if you want to list options such as press one to reach support or press two to reach sales as well as the text box where you can enter the prompt script. Note that importing a prompt is restricted to WAV file only, and the maximum file size is 10 megabytes. Any WAV file format will work, as the MyCloud Connect automatically converts the prompt file to the correct WAV file format as it is being uploaded and assigned. Once the prompt file is uploaded, click on the file name to prompt in the case that you need to review it or edit it at a later time. Click the word bubble to reveal the text box where you can enter in the prompt script. This text box does not do text to speech. It is meant for notating the prompt script in case you need to use it for reference. Enter a time amount in timeout in milliseconds, such as 8,000, and this would give callers eight seconds to enter the prompt before the timeout condition is met. The disable monitor and record warning tone checkbox disables the tone that is normally the sound to warn the callers that their call is being monitored or recorded. Check this box for silent monitoring or unannounced recording specifically on calls that pass through the auto attendant during the scheduled time. Now that we've taken care of the timeout prompt settings, it is time to program individual operations for when the auto attendant is using the schedule. All operations already configured for this schedule are displayed in the schedule component details. Click show more operations to view all programmable operations for the schedule. All operations have the same drop-down options except the multiple digits and the too many errors operations which offer a few programming options. There are too many programming options to cover them all, but let's explore the most commonly used menu prompts programming. Go to Extension will transfer a call to the extension designated on the auto attendant. If we use the name Operator, 
we could program the operator extension here that if a user presses zero, the recorded call would likely say something to the effect of, to speak to an operator, dial zero. Transfer to extension is similar to go to extension, but will notify the caller that their call is being transferred without announcing a destination name or extension. Select the check mark to approve your programming. For dial by first or last name, the names and extensions included in the list are determined one of two ways. Separate extension lists can be created and associated with this option on the auto tenant, just like choosing an extension list in any other call flow component. Otherwise, if no extension list is chosen, the extensions will be included. Otherwise, if no extension list is chosen, the extensions that include the checkbox, include in system dial by name directory, will be used in the phone settings. Take message works like go to extension, as it delivers calls directly to the extension without announcing it, and rather than ringing the user's phone, it is delivered directly to their mailbox. Take message by first or last name works like the dial by first or last name, except in this case, it takes a message rather than delivering it to the user. For most operations, once you've chosen programming for an entry, a field will appear allowing you to configure a specific action you've chosen, such as forwarding a call or identifying an extension list for dial by name. Be sure you assign a valid extension when configuring prompts. As mentioned earlier, call flow is connected via extensions of different components. You cannot build forward in the Connect Call Flow Editor, creating linked components as you go. If you're linking to a component in the auto attendant, for instance, the component must already be built, as we saw with extension lists and schedules. You also cannot enter an available extension for an operation in advance, planning on building the linked component afterwards and assigning the extension to it. Even though extensions are what we create the call flow components between, must already be assigned to a component or a user in order to be linked to. Click back to return to the main auto attendant screen. And finally, remember you can see the call flow selection in the space to the right of the editor panel. In conclusion, we have discussed programming nine call flow components today, scheduling effects, many of our call flow component options, and what we've programmed for on hour schedule creates an off hour schedule based on the hours that are excluded from the on hour schedule. Holiday schedule allows for a pre programmed calendar to take effect on company holidays and determine different routing for those days that are normal working days. Finally, for schedules, our custom schedules, which are similar to holiday schedules in allowing selection of dates, but additionally, hours are provided as a programming option. Extension lists are utilized by other call flow components to determine the extensions included or excluded from certain call flow components. Pickup groups allow users to pick up others' phone calls when they're ringing without needing to leave their desk. Additionally, they don't have to know which phone is ringing, just that a phone is ringing. Paging groups allow for my telephones to be used as paging speakers. This allows for messages to be sent to all members of a paging group, which is assigned using an extension list. Hunt groups are groups of users that ring based on programming of the hunt group. They can ring simultaneously or top-down distribution. They can be redirected if they access it outside of scheduled hours or if a member is unable to answer the call. And finally is auto attendance, which allows calls to be distributed based on selections from callers of a predefined list of options. Thank you for attending our course on the MyCloud Connect Visual Call Flow Editor.